now we're going to see what profit looks like assuming, as we usually will, uh, diseconomies of scale. So our first graph will have dollars on the vertical axis, quantity on the horizontal axis. Diseconomies of scale, as we saw earlier, mean that the total cost function looks like this. It, it rises more and more rapidly as Q increases. And we're going to assume perfect competition. So the total revenue curve looks like this. Let me rewrite that. P times Q, where P is a constant. So that is a reflection of perfect competition. Which we often call price taking behavior. Which means the firm believes it's so small that it can't affect the price that it gets for its output. Like the, I think I gave the example, the corn farm in Iowa can't affect the worldwide price of corn. So for better or for worse, those are our assumptions. And the reason I said for better or for worse is because they're um, the total revenue assumption is unrealistic because most firms aren't price takers. They have some control over their price. And the total cost function is also unrealistic because most firms enjoy economies of scale, and this is assuming diseconomies of scale. I should write that diseconomies of scale. So both parts of this story are unrealistic but it but if you want to study the realistic part then you have to study what's called industrial organization and that's a whole different part of economics and putting environmental economics on top of industrial organization is you know far beyond anything we're going to try we, we would want to try to get into so these are simple assumptions we're just going to have to to go with them What does profit look like? Uh, um, maybe I did this in the other video without mentioning it. We use the lowercase Greek letter pi. Here's a pi. And it and I intend that to be interpreted lowercase, uppercase pi, I'd write this way. Um, lowercase pi to mean profit. The reason that economists like to do that is because we use the letter P to denote price. We have these two important ideas, price and profit, that both start with the, in English with the letter P. So, um, so we'll use a lowercase pi for profit, and then we'll just keep the lowercase P for price. So, a as we did before, if total revenue is equal to total cost, profit is equal to zero. And you can see this pi equals tr minus tc. So, of course, if tr is equal to tc, then pi is zero. That's also true uh, here at q is equal to zero, because both the total revenue curve that we're graphing and the total cost curve that we're graphing start at zero. In intermediate microeconomics, you have situations where the total cost curve at q equals zero isn't zero. That's called the short run, but we're not going to deal with those things here. In between, for example, here we have total, where's total revenue? Total revenue is here, total cost is here. So the gap between them is profit, that's not, not very big. If we use a larger value of Q, Total revenue is here, total cost is here, so profit's gotten bigger. If we use an even larger Q, and you see the profit has is going to shrink again. Total revenue is here, total cost is here, so profit's down here. So the pattern we get Like 
that beyond uh, let me label points and points Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. Beyond Q4, let's say Q5. Profit is here. I mean, revenue is here. Cost is here. So now uh, revenue and cost have flipped. Cost is bigger than revenue. And so this is a negative amount of profit. So so profit down here would be negative and it just keeps getting more and more negative because the total revenue curve is rising linearly but the total cost curve is rising a lot more than linearly so the situation just gets worse and worse for the firm the bigger that Q gets what the firm wants to do is maximize profit and the profit maximizing point is here so the answer to the firm's question is Q2. The firm's question is how to maximize profit, and the answer to the firm's question is you produce Q2. Now, this is such an important result that we I, I want to show it to you in several different ways, from several different angles. The next angle graphs Q and here dollars per unit and I want to graph here marginal revenue and marginal cost actually let me I want to, let me change the axes a bit so let me do marginal revenue first so marginal revenue is the change in total revenue over the change in quantity. It's also the slope of the total revenue line. And we talked about this, I think, in the first video. Well, here's the total revenue line. Its slope, let's see, perhaps I'll use a blue equal. This is its the slope is rise over run so it's the ratio of the rise which is this to the run which is this the other way to think about slopes and this I think is probably easier is to draw the tangent line and find the slope of the tangent line Now let me clarify what a tangent line is. This is just in general. Here's some f of x versus x. If I have a value of x like this, let's call it x1, and I want to find the tangent line to the function at that point, what I do is go to that point and draw a straight line which touches the function at that point. Actually, I'm going to draw this a bit better which t touches the function at that point but which otherwise always lies either above the function or below the function so if you draw the correct tangent line here it's going to look something like this Okay, so without a ruler, sometimes I do actually use rulers, but I don't have one handy right now. Um, the point, y you can see that this, that, that my intent was for the straight line to lie below f of x, except at that one point. Let me take another example. Suppose that x2 is here, and I want to find the tangent line of f at this point. It would be here. This would be the tangent line. It's equal to f at one point. Everywhere else, it's below f. I'm going to change. I'm going to re redraw those to change their color, so it's easier for you to tell. So, so the tangent lines. Let me draw the tangent lines in blue. 
actually okay I just grabbed a straight edge so that's the tangent line at x1 and that's the tangent line at x2 and then you, as I, as I say here, then you find the slope of the tangent line. And that tells you what the slope of the function is. Let me also illustrate this is not a tangent line. So what I'm about to, to draw is not a tangent line. So this is, in other words, how to make a mistake. So let's see here. Okay. That's not a tangent line because Remember, a tangent line is supposed to be either everywhere above the function or everywhere below the function. But here you can see that the tangent line is below the function over here, but here the tangent line is above the function, and then here it goes below the function again. So that's not a tangent line. Tangent line has to just glance the function. It just touches at one place. It doesn't intersect the function. Now I say it just touches the function at one place. What I mean is it just touches the function at one place around the area where you're concerned about. It is certainly okay if f of x looks like this and so the this tangent line touches the function here as well as here and the reason is that the the, what you're interested in is the tangent line at x2. So you're only interested in behavior around x2. You don't care about what happens way over here. That, that's totally ir irrelevant. What you care about is that around x2, the tangent line is either uh, always below or always above the function, except at that one point where they touch. What happens far away isn't relevant. Okay, so um, what is uh, marginal revenue? Yeah, I was talking about that here. What is marginal revenue? Marginal revenue is the slope of the total revenue line. How do I, how do I calculate that? Uh, um, well, I was uh, talking about that over here. Slope of this line. Well, this is a straight line. And the slope of a straight line is going to be a constant. So marginal revenue is going to be constant. If you want to draw tangent lines, you can. At Q1, the tangent line would look like this. At Q2, the tangent line would look like this. At Q3, like this. At Q4, like this. At Q5, like this. You see, although I said a tangent line only touches the function at one point, the function is a straight line then actually the only way to draw a tangent line is to make the tangent line be right on the line itself. All the blue lines that I drew have the same slope, that the same angle. If, and, and, and there's one other thing we can say about it is suppose that the delta Q was 1. Well you see from the algebra if Q goes up by 1 TR is going to go up by P times 1, and so the ratio here is P to 1. You know, if something costs $5 a unit, you produce, you sell one more unit, you get five more dollars. So you've gone horizontally one more unit, and you've gone vertically five more dollars. So for every one unit you go horizontally, you go P units vertically, where P is the price. So actually, the marginal revenue is equal to the price. And so since we've assumed that the price is, you guys know, 
constant, that's another reason why the marginal revenue is constant. And constant means graphically horizontal. Okay, so marginal revenues are horizontal line that reflects um, that reflects perfect competition, that reflects price taking behavior. This kind of this kind of marginal revenue curve being flat, and we're going to be using these. I think this is the only kind of marginal revenue curve you're ever going to see in this class, because we are assuming perfect competition, price taking behavior, so price is constant. How about total cost? Uh, let's see. Total cost. I'll draw it over here. There's total cost. Let's um, let's see what marginal cost looks like. So we'll pick a few Q values. Q1, Q2, Q3. And by the way, these subscripts, I didn't put this one in a very good place. These subscripts are just shorthand for saying the first Q that I want to talk about, the second Q that I want to talk about, the third Q that I want to talk about. A value like Q3 doesn't have to be bigger than Q2, and Q2 doesn't have to be bigger than Q1. These don't have to be in numerical order. I often put them in numerical order. I, I put them in numerical order here. Q1 was less than Q2, was less than Q3, was less than Q4, was less than Q5, but they don't have to be in numerical order. The subscripts, again, I'm repeating myself now, just mean the first Q I want to talk about, the second Q I want to talk about, the third Q I want to talk about. Okay, now going on back on the left, uh, what's the tangent to Q1? Draw some lines up here first. Now I'm going to draw my tangent lines. So the tangent line to total cost at Q1 is going to look roughly like this. I do have a straight edge with me. Well, that was a, I drew that a little bit too high, didn't I? Try it again. By the way, on an exam, it might be helpful to have a straight edge. But even if you don't, it's okay. Don't panic. I understand. I'm going to be grading your exams. I understand that, as you can see, it's hard for me to draw tangent lines sometimes. So I understand that it's hard for you. And if you get something that's a little bit wrong, that's okay. It might be helpful to say, oh, I know that this is a little bit wrong because of X, Y, Z, but I didn't have time to redraw it, and that's fine. All right, for Q2, let me draw a tangent line to TC at Q2. Yeah, that's not quite right either. Okay, and now finally I'll draw the tangent line to TC at Q3. All right, good. So what have we got? Um, all of these have positive slopes. At, uh, at Q1, this was the tangent line here. At Q2, this was the tangent line, I call it 2. And at Q3, this was the tangent line. So comparing 1 and 2 and 3, you, 1 is flatter. 2 is steeper and 3 is really steep. So the implication would be for marginal cost, which is measured in dollars per unit, that the marginal cost at Q1 would be fairly small. It's positive because the slope of this line is certainly positive. All these lines have positive slopes, so we're going to be talking about positive values for marginal cost. 
But for line number one, it's not very positive. It's not a big positive number. It's a small positive number. For line number two, it's a bigger positive number. For line number three, it's, a, it's an even bigger positive number. So marginal cost would look like that. Now, depending on how you draw it, it you know it might be a straight line. It might it might look like this. It might look like this. Uh, I, I'm not. You you can't really tell. What's important is that these are positive numbers, and that one is is smaller than two, which is smaller than three. I will explain. I will draw something correct right now, but I have to explain it in the next graph. Q2 was this really important point where profit's the maximum. It turns out that the marginal cost curve, so I'm now going to draw this marginal cost curve into this graph here. That's, what I'm, that's the next step. And it turns out that the w right way to draw it Okay, it's going to be rise. It has to be rising. It's going to intersect marginal revenue right here. So I'll explain why in a minute. But this is what marginal cost is going to do. So you know that the shape of marginal cost comes from here. And again, all you know about this is that it's rising. You don't know any details about it. What I haven't explained is that why right at Q2 is where marginal cost intersects marginal revenue. So here's the last graph of this uh, video, which is a really long video. This is marginal profit. So marginal profit is the tangent to profit. In other words, it's a tangent to this. So what does that look like? Again, I think it's going to be a little bit easier if I draw that somewhere else. So let me do that. Profit looks like this and now redrawing profit measured in dollars versus Q so let's find the marginal at a few points uh, let's let's take the marginal here 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 and here. So uh, I'll call it Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. These are different Q, Qs, Q1, Q2, Q3. Yeah, maybe since they're different, I should give them different names, shouldn't I? Q8, Q9, Q10, Q11. So I'm going to draw the tangent lines to total profit there. So that's Q1. Q2 is actually horizontal. And Q3 something like that. And uh, I'm sorry, Q a, a Q a Q eight. So let me use the right numbering. This is for Q eight. This is for Q nine. This is for Q ten. And then let me work on Q eleven. There we go for Q eleven. So, the pattern is that for Q8, which is this line here, that is a positive slope. Not particularly 
small or large, it is a positive slope. At Q9, the tangent line is horizontal. Horizontal lines have zero slopes. And so the marginal profit for Q9 is zero. At Q10, the tangent line is this one, which has a negative slope. And so the marginal profit there is a negative number. And at Q11, the tangent line is here, which, let's see, that looks like it's a negative slope, but it's not quite as negative as the one for number 10. So it's closer to zero than, than number 10. It'd be kind of like this. So connecting the dots, marginal profit would look like, would look like that. We don't really care what it looks like when it's negative. Now coming back to our main diagram, what we can say is that at Q1, and now I do mean Q1, you have a positive tangent. That's not Q1. At Q2, where it reaches a maximum, you have a flat tangent, so marginal profit is zero. Um, I haven't drawn Q3 and Q4 very well. L let me just go to Q4. At Q4, the tangent is going to look something like this. It's going to be negative. And so at Q4, marginal profit is a negative number. So marginal profit looks more or less like this, and I'm just going to be lazy and make it draw it a straight line because it's not a straight line. But um, that's just the laziest way to draw anything is a straight line. Look at Q2. Q2 is where the firm wants to go. It's where profit is maximum. In this diagram, that means the gap between total revenue and total cost is the biggest. In the second diagram, that means that profit reaches a peak right there. In the third diagram, is where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. And in the fourth diagram, it's where marginal profit is equal to zero. Now, sometimes students ask, why would the firm ever want to go where marginal profit is equal to zero? I thought the firm wanted profit. Well, the point is, yes, the firm wants profit. This is profit over here. Profit's not the same thing as marginal profit. When profit is maximized, which is right here, marginal profit is equal to zero. So that's where the firm wants to go. OK, I'm going to stop here. This has been a really long video. So, but, but it's, it's the, the discussion is all connected, and that's the, the reason why it ended up being so long, but uh, I'm going to stop here for this one.